What's going on guys? I am Pryoxys and I am back with another video, man. And I just want to say, where are the Conor McGregor players, man? Where are they? You know, before he lost to Dustin Poirier, they were, they were everywhere. Nobody was really using Dustin like that. When he loses to Dustin and then in a lightweight division, he dropped out of the top fighters. He dropped down to a four-star fighter. Everyone just dropped him. And I'm like, bro, they didn't change too much on Conor for you not to be using him anymore. Right? So I had to make this showcase here, man. All right. So I have four fights here. I have a fight versus Brian Ortega, which is a very good fight. Um, well, on my end. And I have a fight versus Max Holloway. I have a fight versus two Dustin Poirier's as well. The Max Holloway fight was a very good fight. And then the Dustin Poirier fights, you're going to learn a lot from those as well. Hopefully you check these out. I promise you're going to learn a lot teaching you how to use Conor McGregor, man. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And don't forget, man, turn on them notifications, man. Notification you don't want to miss a stream man and you don't want to miss a upload i promise all right so here we go with the first matchup unfortunately the division 14 opponent we're going against brian t city ortega all right now we're going obviously using the notorious connor mcgregor and a lot of guys think connor mcgregor is just hands they're so used to this box of connor mcgregor but i want to tell you something the most important thing on connor mcgregor is his legs and his feet mainly his feet it's his ability to get in and out. It's his like his his ability to with the distance management and ability to bait opponents in and bait opponents out, right? And in this matchup here, we um we're going against a Brian T. City Ortega. Now we know 100% his path to victory is getting the fight to the ground. So what do we do? Well, obviously we're going to want to more so work the hands. We're going to want to pressure him. That way we're not near the cage and he can get an easier takedown. Also, we want to be careful with throwing kicks, right? And we're going to, it's a three round fight, so we don't have to necessarily be super careful with the stamina. You know, Connor isn't a volume puncher, guys. He isn't. He is not a volume puncher. Nice body kick, cross, jab, cross. You know, just simple boxing will beat Brian Ortega. He can't box with you. He won't. The chances of Brian Ortega outboxing you are fairly small. Fairly small. Right? Nice high kick. Nice. Okay. One, two. Your one, two is just like the Sean O'Malley showcase. Your one, two is going to be money here. Going to the body. Sit. Basic boxing beats Ortega. You don't have to be fancy. Just basic one, two, threes will be Ortega. I promise. Bait out some distance. You can use things like front kicks. But again, like I said, you got to be careful because he can catch him. But you don't have to do anything special to beat Ortega. You just need takedown defense. Takedown defense and bottom game. And obviously submission defense. See, I'm not really doing anything special. None of my combinations are special. It's just simple combinations going against Ortega. But these are the obvious things, you know. I would hope that he gets me to the ground. But I'm not sure if he's going to shoot a takedown. Body, 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 body. Okay. You don't have to do anything special with Conor McGregor. I don't know a lot. He's a very unique fighter. But the way you play him, you don't have to be crazy with Conor McGregor. I deny that takedown. And then with Conor McGregor in this matchup, you, you can work Brian Ortega's stamina. But again, like I said, it's a three-round fight. So it's it's not going to be, you know, as draining as it would be in a five-round. Right? So he's clinching me a couple times. I'm fine with that. And if you want to stop the clinch, uh, the best strike to do so is with the cross. No other punch besides the cross. Like I said, I'm fine with trading with him. Don't be afraid. I know you guys look at your uh, health stats, but don't be afraid to trade. You know what I'm saying? You have the 100% boxing advantage. And you see here how I'm pressuring him, right? But I'm obviously not headhunting. I'm going to the body. I'm going up top. Everything, you know what I'm saying? Everything is, is he keep him guessing, right? Jab up top, jab down low. Nice, that's nice. Okay, I go for the body kick. He catches it. I didn't try to do that. One, two. Simple boxing. I know this seems obvious to some of you players out there, but sometimes this is what you need. Um... For players that aren't as advanced as others um you know a lot of guys come into matches like this throwing kicks on kicks on kicks on kicks and open up the opportunity to be taken down or some guys come into matchups like this and they go crazy with the boxing combinations and you don't have to you really don't have to go crazy with boxing combinations against brian ortega um really against anybody due to conor mcgregor's his speed and his power makes up for that 
Okay. See, just simple one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, knock them down, right? Then we're gonna go to the body. That misses. Okay. Cross to the body. Fake. One, two to the body. And the most important thing I see a lot, and I wanna say this because a lot of guys make this mistake. Um they 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 throw all of their punches moving forward. Look at how much slower it is when I throw my punches moving forward versus when I plant my feet and just rip these combinations. Always look to plant your feet unless you have to, you know, um, cut the distance. Like you can cut the distance with the jab, then plant with the with the uh, cross. But always look to plant your feet, guys. Boom, body, boom, body, body. And that's one of my favorite combinations is a is a jab up top followed by the cross down low. He shoots to take that. I'm going to actually let him get the take down. I didn't deny. I could have denied it, but I didn't deny it. And I want to show you guys off of my back, right? Just be patient. You guys see the top at the top of the screen, the grapple advantage. Now, he's throwing those punches, which is giving him a bit of grapple advantage, but I'm being patient, right? He's throwing all these punches. Easy he transition. He doesn't. He does a fake followed by more strikes then he transitioned up to top mount now once we get here we have to be careful the obvious thing to do is to go top, uh get up right the obvious Conor mcgregor is gonna go for this get up and, and brian ortega is gonna look to deny the get up but i'm not gonna go there i'm gonna go to the side be patient um let him keep me on the ground and just work from here right i'm in half guard boom he lets me get the full guard now this is my safest place right and um some fakes that you can use boom you can fake that right there going down this is going to be your best fake is going down that get up right there right now i didn't deny that transition i thought that was a fake and that's fine let's fake he bites on that fake you see the grab advantage at the top of the screen you see my grab advantage going up gradually boom we deny that and then we should be able to get up with the get up because we have full grapple advantage those small strikes into denying the transition opened up the opportunity to go for that get up transition boom we push him back back to the body just simple boxing the simple boxing can be the most effective boxing boom cross to the body cross to the body but he i missed that one okay okay nice now he's sitting in the pocket yep knock him down go for the body kick he catches it nice yeah it's just you don't have to do anything extravagant okay he rocks me, stand there. He doesn't have the stamina. His stamina is low. He's probably gonna get finished in the third round, maybe even here. Okay. See how he's sitting in my face? I'm fine with that. I will throw one punch. Boom, one punch. I'm, I'm expecting an uppercut. Upper, no? Body, okay. And that goes to second round. Very clean boxing. I've been rocked. I got rocked first round. I got rocked this round. But all in all, just clean boxing. You guys seen the patience on the ground. You don't have to do anything crazy with Connor. Connor's stats and overall just striking will, mo will do most of the work for you. You just got to do the simple things, the small mind games, the footwork, you know, making the reads. But other than that, Connor McGregor will do the rest for you. Okay, here we go. He doesn't touch my glove. Throws a jab cross high kick. Push him back. Body, body. I missed those. Okay. Front kick pushes him back. Okay. That was a little clean combination. Nice. Oh, he rocks me. Okay. He shoots a take. I'm going to let him get this takedown too. Shoots another takedown. Let's see. I'm going to fake the full guard. I'm going to fake the full guard again. You see the grab advantage meter? He's biting on all of that. It goes my free get up. Again. When you do a fake, look at the grapple advantage meter at the top. And if it goes up a little bit, that means they tried to deny that transition. He goes for another takedown. I'm going to let him get this one too. Right? All right. Let's do fake the sprawl. And, and look, this is the most important thing. Look at how, how often I'm throwing the strike. Look at the top of the screen. Right? Deny that. Right? Now look at the top of the screen. You see how I'm punching? See how I'm punching? That's how you want to punch. Now he gets me in. in a <clears throat> Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh oh, here we go. He has now no grab of any. He throws a strike. Boom, we go side saddle. Now the most the the obvious thing to do here is go towards the backside. But I'm gonna go towards side control, right? Because we know right now I'm winning this decision. 100% winning this decision. 
He tries to posture up. He does a fake posture up. Okay. He does a strike. The means he threw, the second he threw a strike, I went into pos uh into half guard. And again, continue being patient. Fake. You see that he bit he's biting on all of these fakes. Doom, we deny that transition. And we're gonna reverse the position here. Nope, he denied it. Nice. He's probably gonna go top mount. Yep, he goes top mount. Now, again, the most obvious thing to do is go for the get up, right? So we go half guard. Right? Now, we know we won round one. We know we run round two. What do we have to worry about? Getting finished. A lot of guys, they're Conor McGregor players, and they're like, I got to get back up to my feet. I got to knock this guy out. I don't need to do that. He has to finish the fight. I can sit here and win a 29-28 a, um, a decision. Right? I can sit here and win a 29-28 decision. Now, this is the risky thing that I'm going to take. I'm going to try to go for this sprawl transition. Nope. Deny his cruiser. And look how often I throw these strikes. That's how you want to throw them. Boom, denied that. Boom, we go for the sprawl. Now, in this position here, I can go up or I can go down. Okay. Nope, denied, the, denied his transition. Reverse, get back up to the feet. Now, here we go. Boom, kick him here. And again, he has to win the fight. So, chances are he may throw something crazy at the end of the fight. Not sure. But all in all, I will win this decision. I don't have to. Uh oh. Tried to go crazy at the end. <laughs> I didn't. I don't have to do anything sporadic and crazy to get this finisher. You don't always have to end your fights with knockouts and, and or TKOs or submissions. A dominant decision is fine by me. I dominated this guy. He went to the ground, but he didn't do anything. He got me a crucifix. He didn't do anything. All in all, I dominated this guy. Worked the boxing. And let's see. I'm pretty sure I won the fight. 29-28. I won this fight. Yep. 29-28 decision victory over this guy. He was division 14. Again, don't judge people by their division. Don't play a certain way because someone is a certain division. Don't do that. Because that right there will make you play like trash versus lower division. And when you go against somebody higher division, you'll be like, man, maybe I'm trash. And you're not. You're just playing a certain way. You're playing to your level. Don't play to your level. Play at a high level all the time all right all right let's check the decisions see one judge gave me 30 27 then two other judges gave it 29 28 all right there we go now i'll be back with another fight guys go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't i'll be back soon all right before i jump into this match guys i just want to say look at this look at this do you guys see conor mcgregor anywhere in the, in the top fighters in lightweight you don't see him no more and it's crazy to me that nobody literally uses conor mcgregor in lightweight anymore it's honestly sad it's honestly sad. This guy's going Dustin Poirier. Going to go Conor McGregor. Now, why exactly did they take Conor out the top fighters? Well, that's because Conor is now a four-star fighter. He's no longer a four-and-a-half. He's a four-star fighter, which resulted to him being dropped down. But if you look at his striking and his stand-up, look at that. What has changed? What has changed? His punch power went down, and he also took a nerf to the, um, the leg health. He took a nerf to the chin. But the, nothing has really changed about Conor McGregor. Not not enough for you not to want to use him, especially over Dustin Poirier. Only reason you'd use Dustin over Conor is because of the jujitsu and maybe the cardio. Other than that, there's no reason not to. And in this matchup, you want to pressure Dustin Poirier. You don't want Dustin to pressure you. You want to keep it calculated. You want to try to counter Dustin. Now, what you can do is out kickbox Dustin. Dustin isn't the best kickboxer. Obviously, he did kick Conor's leg. But that was more so boxing Conor versus the, you know, karate stance type of fighter Conor, right? So, fight starts, and I, the strikes that I like to use to go to the body, things are like front kicks. I like I would like to use leg kicks, not to necessarily um, just straight up land or do tons of damage. Just a distraction, just, just to give him a reason to switch stance, maybe block low, but just keep everything calculated. Jab right there, goes up top. Low kick, okay. Front kick, he blocks it. He's probably gonna, uh, yep, does that right there. I'm about to say, hit me up top. And we're looking at his block, right? I'm not gonna allow him to straight up pressure me. Okay, looking at his block. I'm looking at his block to see when is my opportunity to throw a low kick. It's the first round, so I just wanna get him thinking about something else besides uh, up top. You see, I'm just throwing these jabs. Boom, catch with the low kick. And that's, I've landed three low kicks now. See, he was going to check that low kick right there. 
And now because he's already thinking about his leg, it opens up opportunities to land small strikes up top that'll that'll uh you know damage the chin and will change the sequence of this fight later on. Jab cross lands clean. Ah, missed a low kick. Okay. Now I right now I feel like this guy's waiting on a low kick. So what I'm gonna do is abandon the low kick, maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute. But I'm gonna abandon the low kicks and get him thinking about up top. And the second he gets to think about up top too much, guess what? We go back low. See, he's moving his head, blocking high. See how he's moving his head now? So after exchange, after he those blows, he moves his head. So after he gets done with his combination, guess what we're going to do? Fire off a leg kick because he's going to be moving his head. And like I said, he, he's playing a bit weird, but I'm not going to let that change the way I play. Right? One, two. Nice block is broken. Opened up opportunity. Land a low kick. Okay. He switches stance. That's what we wanted right there. Now, once he does something like that, I'm no longer going to focus his legs. I got what I wanted. This is an advantage. Once people switch stance, especially someone with a very low switch stance, guess what? Their power goes down. And uh, that gives me an extreme advantage. Just employ a switch stance is not, is not that high. So, I switch. I switch my focus from his legs. Now I switch my focus straight to his body. Everything was going to go to the legs. It's going to go to the body now. So I throw a front kick there. There we go. He puts he puts Dustin at a, at a pretty decent disadvantage going orthodox. Okay. Round one. Fight isn't that exciting, but an exciting fight is a, a technical fight is an exciting fight in my eyes. So we look at the striking stats, and I threw 30, and I mean, I'm sorry, I threw 71, landed 30. He threw 55 and landed 18. So the accuracy shows a lot in this fight. I probably threw what landed maybe about somewhere around 40% of my strikes. He, he only landed 18 strikes on me. And I already got him to switch stance. So this is going to be probably a, more so a longer fight. But boom. Now, the fight. The second he switches back to the southpaw stance, guess what we do, guys? Back to that leg. Get him thinking up top. Go to the leg. Don't use. The, oh, we rock him up top. That gives me opportunity to jab, 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 low kick. All three of those jabs were thrown just to get him thinking about up top. Just to, you know... Do a lot of damage to that block and give him a reason back to go back um, blocking up top. Okay. Nice. Now he switched back to um, orthodox. So guess what? Now it's time to work the body. Nice jabs. He's probably going to try to take... Oh, no. Okay. So what he, he's throwing jab jabs, right? That's an opportunity to slip cross him. Boom, slip cross. See that there? That's what I mean when I say making reads, man. Nice. Okay. Push him back. Just simple boxing, man. Conor McGregor isn't isn't a hard fighter to use. See, he's throwing jab jabs. And then he he's not adjusting to me adjusting. It's all about making those adjustments. Right? Boom, go to the body. Boom, body. It's it's he keeps on with this double jabbing, and it's gonna put him in trouble. But he's probably gonna adjust to it. That's why on the second strike, I'm going to slip back. Oh, no. Okay. He went to the body. Nice. Boom. Okay. One, two, three. Landed. I'm waiting on a one, one from him. There it goes. Oh, okay. You guys see he's... I don't know if he's noticing that he's consistently throwing a jab jab. 
but that's the things that differentiate a division 20 player to a high high level player it's all about making those reads man obviously you no know, cheese can get you there but if you're playing like the esfl esports fight league um it's it's levels especially with striking people will pick up and you know make adjustments on the things that you're doing here we go body kick ah out of range okay You guys see that every time. Now he threw a uh, hook. So that means he's adjusted to that. But it may be too late to adjust. That's the problem. It may be too late to make adjustments to uh, his play style. You know, he's taking a lot of damage. I'm not sure where his body health is at. I'm not sure where his chin is at. But it's, he, ha well, it's not too late. I'm tripping. It's not too late to make adjustments. But he's going to have to do something. He's down two rounds now. All right. Now, again, where does he fight? start the fight off is? Southpaw. So, guess what we're going to do? Back to that leg. When we hit him here, go high. Get him thinking about it. Nice. I was too close. Jab. Okay. Nice. Okay. Low kick. Hook. Okay. Low kick landed. Again, I want him to switch stands. I, want, I don't want to fight Dustin in south i want to fight dustin in orthodox so i'm going to give him a reason to switch stance otherwise i'll chew his leg up and that's the secondary the primary obviously is to land up top the distractor is going to uh, the legs boom kick the leg boom now we got him switched back to the orthodox stance and that's what we wanted right he's gonna probably go to my body no okay Boom. Double jab. Nice. Okay. Boom. I'm fine with trading with Dustin. He's Like I said, he's in the orthodox stance. So he's not going to be as powerful as, the, you know, as he would be in Southpaw. Nice. Okay. Go to the body. Go to the body. Cross to the body. See, I, I focus. I switched my complete focus from going to the legs to going to the body. Right? And I'm not doing anything extravagant. Just simple, simple, simple boxing. We rock them here. Go body. Go to the body. Cross, body, cross, jab, cross, lead hook, cross. Oh, nice. I thought I was going to throw jab, cross. Okay. Now, right now, I'm being a bit too aggressive. Very aggressive. But it's all, it's all good. I feel like I feel like right now, his stats, like his stamina stats, I'm not his stamina, but his health stats are not looking good. But, I mean, all in all, it's the third round going into the fourth. Oh, yeah, that, that's it. I'm going to finish the fight here. Boom. That's it. That's it. You guys see what I did there? I hope you guys, this right here was a very good fight to learn from. I went from attacking the legs to attacking up top to attacking down low to attacking up top. Like, it was all, I... All three levels of Dustin Poirier were attacked. And that's what it takes. A lot of guys head hunt with Conor McGregor. And that's not what you do. That's not what you do, man. It, it's strategical gameplay here, man. I hope you guys learned from this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, man. I'll be back with another fight, all right? All right, so this one is the most interesting one. And this is a matchup you're going to see a lot in the featherweight division. It's the Max Holloway pick, right? Now, I'm going to break this down real quick. The key things you do against Max Holloway, one... Don't allow him to pressure you. Two, don't allow him to make you throw a lot of punches with him. Max Holloway has the stamina advantage, right? Pressure Max. Max Holloway power is 85. He can't fight in the pocket with you. He cannot. He cannot fight in the pocket with Conor McGregor. But it's calculated pressure. It's not consistent strikes. It's singular strikes. Maybe double up on strikes to you know just land on Max, right? 
but you don't let Max control the pace and push you, right? Simple strikes, right? He's kicking my leg. Boom. And you also pay attention to his block, right? We're looking at Max block. He's keeping it high. Keeping it high. We go low with the jab. Boom. Two body shots. He blocked the second one. Nice overhand. He's going to throw a low kick. There he goes. I check it. Okay. And all in all, I'm just pressuring Max. Obviously, this Max Holloway player isn't the, one of the best Max Holloway players, but the game plan stays the same, but the execution may change due to which fighter, whichever player you're going against. Conor McGregor has the chin, right? He just doesn't have the cardio. He has the power, but he doesn't have the cardio to keep up with Max. But you keep your, you keep everything um, short and crispy, and you, you think about accuracy over volume, right? Also, you have the speed advantage here, too. Boom. I'm just touching Max. I'm not doing a lot of damage. I'm just touching him. And because of Conor McGregor power stat, like I said, Conor McGregor will work for you. You don't have to do a lot of work with, with Conor. Conor McGregor will work for you. The power will work for you. You just got to land the strikes. Boom. He pushing me back. But I'm not allowing him to pressure me. Nice uppercut. And a lot of guys get con countered when using counter a lot because, and well, really they get countered period because their strikes become very predictable, right? Don't be predictable. Switch up your game plan. If if you're do something, and if your opponent, that's why I said I always say think about what you're throwing. Don't throw stuff for no reason because when you throw stuff for a reason, and and um we like like let's say for example if I throw a jab to the body, I threw that to just check what he was gonna do, right? Check his block. Check if he countered, right? Then you that gets you thinking, okay, he's he's adjusted. That it's the small mind games. Even though this game is is the way this game is, you can still play mind games with people. You can still mentally beat people. You can still outsmart people. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes EA outsmarts you due to their game, but you can still outsmart people by reacting and doing things. You set up you set up a bomb. And then you make it go off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You set up the, the counter and then you go off with that counter. Right? I'm going to the body a lot. What does that set off? His uppercut. Him wanting to uppercut. He tried to slap me. And if he doesn't uppercut, see, it, right there. I threw a jab to the body, a very fast strike. And what did he try to do? Throw an uppercut. It's, it's you setting people up mentally. You mentally controlling him with your offense. You're controlling his offense. It, it gets pretty deep, bro. Like... You're controlling his offense with your offense. Right? I threw jab, throwing these jabs to the body, which resulted to me making me control him to throw an uppercut. And then if I wanted to, if I wanted to maybe faint the jab to the body and then immediately slip and throw an uppercut, it would look sick because I literally set him up. And those are the things that I'm talking about. Don't throw things with no intention or know why you're throwing them. Have a reason to throw everything. It's pretty hard. It's not easy. It's not something that is, you know, mentally not draining. It's very draining consistently making reads, playing these high-level fights, and staying at that level. But at the highest level, those are the things you got to do. Nice. All right? It's just very clean boxing from Connor, man. Nice. And I could kickbox versus Max, but like I said, I, I, I'm staying in the pocket. I'm staying very close to him, so I don't want to take the chance of getting hit multiple times while going to his body. I mean, while trying to throw a kick. So that's why I'm keeping it more so boxing, just straight up boxing. But if I have the opportunity, I 100% will uh, throw a kick. But all in all, I just want to stay in in his face and, allow, and control the pace of the fight. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, if... Right there, I was about to say, if Max gets crazy with strikes, guess what Conor McGregor is? A counter puncher. Nice high kick. Conor McGregor is a counter puncher, so on top of that, you can counter punch. If he throws too many strikes, like he throws one, two, three, or a jab cross followed by a lead hook, guess what you can do? You can pull counter the lead hook and hit him with an uppercut, hit him with a cross. If he goes, you know, just a simple jab, you can... You can... Oh, whoa, I'm about to say. Body kick. Missed it. 
one of his guys' favorite combinations is the, uh, I'm noticing is a jab lead hook. I mean, a jab hook. Nice. Nice. We rock him here. Go to his body. Go to his body. I'm looking for an uppercut. Okay. He threw a kick in the pocket. Jab cross. Jab real hook. We rock him. Cross to the body. Cross. Lee hook. Cross up top. Just simple, clean boxing from Connor, man. Nice knees. We'll check that. Go to the body with the kick. Yep. Nice. Not really sure where Max Holloway's stamina is at. Boom. There goes the counter. Go to the body. One, two. One, two. Fake to the body. Nice hook. He got through a low kick. High kick. Nice. Ooh. He caught me. That was nice. He caught me with that high kick. That was nice. I tried to throw a front kick, and he caught me with the high kick and flash KO'd me. That was nice. And that's why I say you got to keep it boxing. That's why I say you got to keep it boxing right there, man. Nice high kick. That was a nice high kick. I was controlling this fight, but the high kick just boom, flash KO'd me. That right there is tough. That right there is tough. It's all good, though, man. I'll be back with another fight. Guys, if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on post notifications. All right, this is another fight with Conor McGregor. Now, um, I just showed you guys uh, the fight with... I mean, I'm sorry, another fight versus Dustin Poirier. I just showed you guys the fight with fighting Dustin Poirier and just consistently, you know, doing... attacking his legs, doing this and that. Now, I'm, this fight, I'm literally going to headhunt, and I'm going to show you guys the results that you can get. Now, there's a positive and a negative result to completely headhunting with Conor McGregor, and I'll show you in this fight. Now, I'm going to play aggressive, but I'm not going to play stupid. But I'm literally only going to head hunt. All right. Okay. And on top of that, it's a three-round fight. So. And the negatives and the positive. One, the positive is obviously getting the knockout. And, uh, you know. Doing a lot of damage on one body's head. But the negative is you're not really draining their stamina. If they're not striking much, you're not draining much stamina. Okay. Nice. And Conor McGregor isn't one to be going five rounds. Especially head hunting. Okay. See, it's just, I, just, I don't know. I just feel so ineffective sitting here only punching for the head. I don't know how you guys do it or how people do it. I feel like I'm not I'm not using the purpose of Connor. Connor isn't just a head puncher. He's a counter puncher. He likes to attack the body with, with uh, those, like those, those front kicks. But I just feel so ineffective. Like, I don't know. It, it just don't even feel like, oh, I caught him there. I caught him clean. But that's the positive side to you to, to using Connor. And just straight up headhunting. He has the attributes, the speed, the power to do so. But there are levels. You must understand. There are levels. Boom, we rock him here. We knock him down. One, two. I don't know, guys. Oh, I could have countered him right there. I don't know. I just don't feel like... Using Connor like this is effective, you know, especially versus high level players. I, like, it's not like I could be killing his body right now, and but instead I'm punching for his head. Now, he made a mistake right there, he made a huge mistake throwing that kick in the pocket. Okay, oh, yeah, that's it. Oh my 
goodness, he's a survivor. <laughs> he's a survivor. Okay. Please don't throw a hook. Please don't throw a hook. <sighs> Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. Dustin, 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 man. I asked you nicely to please do not throw a hook. And what did he do? He threw a hook. It's all good, man. GG's, bro. This is the positive side um, of, you know, being very, very active with the hands to the head with Conor McGregor. There's a positive side, but again, again, there's a negative side. There's times where you will get countered over and over and over again, or it'll go deeper into the rounds and you run out of stamina, and it's like, bruh. But yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was the last fight of this showcase. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if y'all are new, and don't forget, man, turn on those post notifications. You don't want to miss a stream, and you don't want to miss a upload, guys, all right? Peace out. Have a good day.